What is going on guys? Chaz here. I honestly haven't posted in a few weeks, but today I've decided that I'm going to post again. And I'm today I'm doing a comparison of the iPhone 4, which is this phone right here, and the iPod Touch 4th generation. This phone right here, this iPod right here, on their final iOS version, which for the iPod's case is iOS 6.1.6. .6. And for the iPhone 4's case, is iOS 7.1.2. The iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch 4 have very similar specs. They both feature an Apple A4 chip, which consists of one single core ARM Cortex A8. The iPad 1 was unlucky enough to not even get iOS 6 despite having this chip. The iPod Touch 4th generation and iPhone 4 were the first devices to feature a front facing camera. However there is one massive difference between these two devices and it's not that this one can't take phone calls or anything, of course it can't, but there's another small difference which is kind of big actually if you're talking about performance and how many apps can be loaded but that's the fact that the iPod Touch 4th generation only has 256 megabytes of RAM compared to the iPhone 4 which has 512 megabytes of RAM and this is the reason why the iPhone 4 got an extra OS upgrade to iOS 7 whereas this iPod stopped off at iOS 6 and although a security updates came a little later for these for this device and the iPhone 3GS, which fixed FaceTime on this one, and and an SSL bug on this iPod and the iPhone 3GS, both devices which stopped off at iOS 6. Many people complain about iOS 7 actually being quite slow on the iPhone 4, but actually it's really fast. Compared to like iOS 4 on the iPhone 3G, it's actually really fast. Of course it's not perfect, and iOS 6 was obviously faster, iOS 5, iOS 4, obviously faster on this iPhone, but sadly it's quite hard to downgrade an iPhone 4 to a previous iOS version, unlike the 4S, because no previous iOS versions are being signed by Apple. Although you can use SSSH blobs to trick the server into thinking they are being signed, this will only work if you've saved SSSH blobs on the previous iOS version that your iPhone 4 was running. And although there's another way which involves using a computer to boot up your iPhone each time you boot it up, it's not very convenient and it will also break Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data functionality as well as the phone's ability to act as a phone. So it's pretty much useless unless you want some nostalgia. There's another way, untethered without SSSH blobs, but it requires a Mac and is very hard to set up. So I'm not going to go into that here. Hopefully they'll release like a Windows or a Linux version soon. But for now, I'm stuck with 7.1.2, whether I like it or not. So, these devices have very similar specs, but they are different. And they can only go up to different iOS versions. This means that some apps in the speed comparison will be old versions. In fact, pretty much all of them will be old versions, like Opera Mini and stuff. And I've got a few games to test, as you can see here. Of course, there will be older versions on iOS 6 than they are on iOS 7. But honestly, there shouldn't be too much of a difference. So guys, I'm first going to start... With Opera Mini. Oh, right, guys, that was a bit of. Alright. Right. How about we close all of these apps quickly and then let's start the speed test again. Alright, guys, that was a bit of a failure, but now let's get started with the speed test. There were a few apps running in the background on this guy, so. So the test would have been a bit biased, to be honest, because this one would obviously run slow with more apps in the background. So, anyways, let's launch Opera Mini. Three, two, 
one. The iPod Touch was actually faster. There's, as you can see, it's still loading on the iPhone. It's actually faster. Let's try loading. Let's try loading Google. Three, two, one. The iPod was faster again, although Opera looks and feels a lot more modern on the iPhone 4. This kind of looks quite retro, to be honest. It looks quite old. It looks like it was designed like in 2010 or something. Whereas this one looks more 2014, 2015, like. So honestly, these obviously are different versions of the app. This version of the app is the last one that can run on iOS 6. And this version of the app is the last one that can run on iOS 7. But that shouldn't make too much of a difference in speed. Honestly, I'd like to at some point m extract the IPA for this and install it on this one so I can get a proper speed test with the same version of the app on both devices. But let's not do that today. Now, we're going to be playing... No, we won't be playing some games yet. We're going to be opening iTunes trailers. These are obviously all oh, right. Let's let's do that again. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Right. Sorry about this. This is my first speed test, so it's obviously not going to be very great. But three, two, one. The iPod Touch was actually faster just then. I'm beginning to think that iOS 7 wasn't really well optimised for A4 devices and iOS 6 was the last well optimised version for A4 devices. Which honestly proves the planned obsolescence. Stuff that's going around like Apple slow down their iPhones so that you buy new iPhones, stuff like that. It kind of really proves this, and although my 6S is actually faster than iOS 13, it's even faster than my Galaxy S9. I will be doing a video about that. It's still obviously going to be slower than it was on iOS 9 and stuff. And I'm sure iOS 4 on these devices will be very snappy. 3, 2, 1... Oh, they're both taking quite a while to load. These are clearly different versions. I don't think there are any apps on here that are different versions. The iPhone 4 actually did it faster than the iPod Touch. And I believe Spotify is broken on the iPod Touch anyway. It's broken on iOS 6. That's at least from my experience with it. You can't, like, view the browser stuff. You can't view the browser. It will just load indefinitely. Now guys, let's try VLC. I don't have any videos downloaded, so it's not a very good comparison, but three, two, one. The iPhone 4 was actually faster again, which kind of starts to prove my theory that iOS 7 isn't very optimised for A4 devices as false. And it's more of the apps that are optimised for older devices. So, now we can move on to the games. I've got two games downloaded. I did initially plan to have three, but I downloaded like two extra games and they both crashed. I wonder if that's an issue with like iOS or the game version themselves. But obviously these are older versions, so, so yeah. They won't just like patch them in an update and I'll be able to run them on my old iDevices so. here. So let's try twist. Three, two, one. Alright, it's taking quite a little while to load on both. A bit like Spotify. Alright, the iPhone 4 did that one faster. I'm starting to think that the 512 megabytes of RAM really does make a difference on the iPhone 4, even though today that would like be hardly anything. 
I still think it's making a bit of a difference. And obviously it'd be quite hard to play this game at the same time on two different devices. So I'm not going to go any further than that. Alright, not sure what's up with this iPhone's home button. Anyways guys, we're now going to be trying Sonic. These are both older versions of Sonic. However, they're not all that different. So... And Twist runs on the latest version on both. It requires iOS 6 and newer. And it hasn't been updated for a while. But guys, let's now try Sonic. 3, 2, 1. The iPhone 4 was once again faster. Or maybe on par. They don't look too different. Of course, the iPhone 4 actually started the app faster. Maybe the iPod Touch is going a little faster. Honestly, I can't say much for that one. They are almost almost the same. Like, right. Anyways, guys. Now let's try opening some stock apps like Notes, 3, 2, 1. iPod Touch was faster in that case, but that's because this app is obviously looking a lot less modern than this one. And Reminders, 3, 2, 1. iPod was once again a little faster. Let's try doing clock. Three, two, one. Seems to load at about the same on both. It honestly shows that not much has changed between these two iOS versions of the clock app anyway. And the App Store is also broken partially on iOS 6. You can only download stuff from the top charts section and your purchased page. I'm so guys, that is it for this video. I really hope this gave you a better idea of the difference in performance between the iPod Touch 4th generation and the iPhone 4. I really do hope to downgrade my iPhone 4 to iOS 6 at some point to get a more fair comparison because honestly these are like two different versions of operating systems. They're definitely going to be very different in parts. So anyways I did hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe and turn on those notifications. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. See you next time and goodbye.